Welcome back to For the Win, the greatest gaming podcast in the world. I'm David. Over here is John. This is Henry. And uh, we're going to talk about everything that's happening in gaming today. Uh, Today's podcast is brought to you by Make Halo Great Again. If you love Halo like we do and think it's the greatest franchise in the world, even though it might be struggling right now, check out the link in the description below and pick up your very own Make Halo Great Again hat. John is rocking his. There's a few left in stock. People are getting them in the mail, which is exciting. And, uh, yeah, good times. Streamer XQC signs a non-exclusive two-year contract with Kick. It's said to be the most valuable contract in streaming history, boasting a total value of up to $100 million over a two-year period. This contract is more than LeBron James' $97 million two-year contract extension that he just recently signed is that not the craziest thing you have ever heard especially growing up in gaming but we were in esports before esports was even a word i flat out remember my math teacher (laughs) sophomore year second quarter so this would have been 2004 and him telling me video games will get me nowhere in life And I was like, you can make money playing video games. He's like, no, you can't. And I was like, and that was when uh, there was like, like Fatality and a few other people had started making a living playing like competitively, but you know, wasn't an extravagant living, but you could theoretically, you know, have a normal life. And at that time we thought, I mean, the only way was to like make money was to play it competitively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it's like a whole casual audience of like gaming you don't even have to be good at the game but if you're entertaining now we have these platforms to actually watch we were me and you were a bit ahead on on that john can you imagine if we uh it stuck out what we yeah. had started back then like because we just had a camera pointed at a tv with our backs to the camera playing yeah playing a game on a tv <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> This really, it'll be interesting to see because now the pressure is on Twitch. It's kind of one of those things like can kick outlast, can the money outlast uh, Twitch and will these deals actually mean something or will we get like a Ninja Mixer type of situation where Mixer dies, Ninja who signed a massive contract got the bag and then he just went back to Twitch. I don't know. Yeah, I've actually never watched anybody using Kick, and I've only heard about it within like the last two months, I think. I've seen some interesting clips. Um, one of the the features, if you will, is that there's virtually no delay between like the broadcast and like when the viewers see it. So it's like you can start a sentence and you'll be overlapping by the end of the sentence. And, like same with like the chat, the chat is like near instant. And so uh, stream sniping is like even more, it's like much easier to do on kick because it's so instant, like from when they're streaming to viewing. I'm sure they have some options where you can add a delay, but the clips I was seeing, it's like, it's crazy how, how close to it you can get compared to a twitch that has like a huge delay and even on youtube i'll be watching your stream dave on uh, my phone and then have it up on a pc or something and like the delay just between those two platforms is like i don't know 30 seconds almost it's crazy yeah yeah it's uh it'll be interesting to see who wins the stream war for sure kick has a lot of things going for it it's basically a Twitch clone, uh, Henry, and they literally used uh, like the the uh, what's it called, like the code, like Amazon basically sold sold it to them or gave them a license for it. So it's the same exact thing as Twitch, just with a new skin. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Using like Amazon's yeah cloud, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything. So can Amazon so. just yeah? Every every dude AWS is because like that's from my where I work that's our one of our bigger competitors it's like it's all it's literally every almost everything is running on AWS at this point and so um th- th- yeah if 
I'm not saying Amazon isn't evil, but if somebody, if Amazon would be like really evil, but like, you know, that's like I think either way they're own they're owning it, so it's like win win. Yeah. But uh, in a recent panel, Hideo Kojima said he wanted someone to s- send him to space so he can make a game to play in space, and he said, "quote." I want to go to outer space and create a game that you can play in space because right now all games you can't properly play in outer space, but I want to create something. I'll play that. So someone, please send me up to space. <laughs> what what games can't you play in space? I'm kind of confused because wasn't the first game ever played a Game Boy Tetris, a Russian guy, Russian astronaut played Tetris in outer space. But what does he mean by... I don't know. That's that's exactly what I, what I was gonna say. Like they're they've taken gaming into space before, um, so I don't know if there's more context to that or some word spaghetti there of what the he didn't elaborate. I watched the the panel. He didn't elaborate, but theoretically, you could just take your Xbox up to space, plug it in. Run it like a computer. What? I'm. Am I missing something? Well, I mean, I don't know if we have like. You have know, you been to space, power, Henry? I don't know if we have power <laughs> inverters in space. If, but <laughs> like, I don't know if yeah. we can just plug in an outlet. Like, how's the Wi-Fi? Yeah, maybe someone can enlighten us. What? What he? What he means by that? But in a recent interview. Xbox Game Studios head Matt Booty shared his thoughts on VR and the way that Xbox is approaching the medium. And he said, quote, I think for us, it's just a bit of a wait until there's an audience there. I mean, I'm not a big fan. It's cool. VR is cool, but I have never felt like inclined to like dive into it and get way into it. Same. I don't. I think he's spot on with this. I don't think there is. I feel like it's still very niche audience. Yeah, they're, they're, and especially, especially at least for, for Xbox. When, when it comes to consoles, you use for sure. Like, um, definitely, I feel like PC. The PC market's the big market there. One of my coworkers who likes developing stuff for VR. Today, he was telling me that he's thinking about selling his entire VR setup, which is. Wow, well, crazy! Because he lives in one of these tiny little like closet apartments in Seattle, right? But he's about to move to a bigger place where he would theoretically not have to have his VR setup take up his entire living space. But it's just coinciding with he was like, you know what? When I pack it up, I might just sell it at this point. I don't, I don't care anymore. And it's, um, I don't know. I'm not gonna say it was a, it's a fad because I don't think so. There's definitely a lot more substance there than a fad, but. Um, I don't think we are quite there at 100% mainstream yet. Yeah, it just doesn't seem accessible to a mainstream audience yet. Yeah. Closer every day. Yeah, it's getting better. I like the idea of the augmented reality almost a little bit more, but... I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think these next this next decade is going to like be huge for VR if they keep pushing it pushing it forward. Um some Sonic fans are already riled up about the Sonic Origins Plus and it's not even out yet. Some fans have gotten their hands on retail copies of the game and discovered uh bland character superforms, awkward character select screen and heavy reverb on the uh added to the game gear collections have you guys listened to the comparison of the original game gear and then the new one so in the new game you can play the older game gear games they added a massive amount of reverb to the 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 audio the music that wasn't there before and it doesn't sound good it really sounds bad Instead of just the original clean, you know, whatever, 16-bit or whatever it is, just audio coming out, it's that with a huge amount of reverb on it. I don't know if they tried to modernize it or make it sound more full, but people are... Can you play it? People are up in arms, yeah. 
Let's let's have a listen, shall we? Original sounds good, right? Man, I played that game so much. Six batteries, baby. Six double A's just to play that game. You hear the difference? Yeah. This um this has a lot of other issues too. The fact that they're using the Game Gear versions instead of the Master System versions. They're using games on this um, that they've added the Game Gear version on, but the Game Gear version and the Master System version are identical, except the Master System version is bigger because it has a higher resolution. They're both... This, the Master System and the Game Gear are the same exact hardware. Um, but to compensate for how small the screen is, they literally crop the game in. So it's not scaled. It's just cropped in. And that's the version we're now playing well, on this on this release. We're getting Game Gear games that also had a simultaneous um, Master System ga game when you can get the exact same game, same exact code, just not cropped in. And then it, it makes some parts of the game excessively difficult because it was designed... So where you can see the enemy and it's like throwing stuff at you on one side of the screen, you will be cropped in and you can't see where 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 the bad guy is and other stuff like that. You're completely blind and um, that passed QC back in the early '90s apparently. But um, we should be able to at least at this point in retrospect, like, oh, why why bother with even putting that one on there? You could why they I don't know why they would because I I mean I do that all the time when there's a game that. I loved playing on the Game Gear, uh, but I want to run it better on an emulator. I try and find the Master System version because it's usually just better. Like, yeah. it just runs smoother. It's cleaner. I can just tell it's, a, like, a better version of the game, even though it's identical. So I don't know why they would do that. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Wholesome Diablo player, Awesome Prawn, who suffered through his first capstone dungeon because he ran it solo, decided to help players through struggling with their own capstone dungeons. So by browsing uh, the looking for a group section of Xbox Live, Awesome Prawn helped everyone from crazy kids to married couples and even a 70-year-old grandpa run their first capstone dungeon. Isn't that just like one of the most wholesome things you ever heard? <laughs> Yeah, I need him to help me get to World Tier 4. <laughs> I'm still level 64 or 5. He uh, dropped a whole Reddit post just about kind of his experience. And, yeah, he just went on and he was searching for people. And he found this grandpa who he was running with. And he was – the guy's been playing Diablo since, like, the beginning. And – he said he had the best time and the grandpa even like taught him some things that he didn't even know about the game before. Um, and it just goes to show you there's a definite need for some community features in uh, the latest Diablo. That's for sure. But I just thought that was a wholesome story. Yeah. I've, uh, I've never really used the, the whole looking for group section of Xbox live. It made me kind of want to jump on there and do the same thing. Cause I can beat that dungeon. That's no problem. Um, Final Fantasy 16 Day 1 update announced, but won't be necessary to play the game. The developers apologized for this update, stating the team didn't want to do any pre-release or release day updates for Final Fantasy, even one this minor. Is this just kind of a given, though? Don't sh Shouldn't we just expect it at this point? I don't like it, but shouldn't we expect it? Well, at least they say it's not needed to act to at least boot the game and play it like we've seen before. Um, but I want to know what this was addressing. Like, I'm thinking, like, I don't know, like, uh, it could it could be something that was a, a security flaw that needed to be patched out. That's a if thing. it's if it's a minimal thing that doesn't require any like why. 
are they required? Is there some law in place that requires them? They have to say something if they're dropping an update. Why not just like run a quiet update? Or will people just ask questions because they'll be like, people are oh, going to ask it questions because it's why isn't updating. I, I just got this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and I guess so... it's just better to just say, oh, it's just a nothing update. I wonder what it is, but. I do. I do like the um, kind of the stance that they're taking on the update. You know, their their goal was to not have any updates where I feel like a lot of studios are just counting on having a huge day one update and like work towards that. It's, so yeah, the, the fix yeah. people get the mentality. game and there's like a three gig download and they're just like, uh, but this seems like a pretty minor one. So something I think other studios could look at. Roll the clip of the three four three employing say a lot of people when uh, when you get to launch day, you think that's the end of our journey. But for us here at 343, that's just the beginning. And as developers, when you work on a game, you want to get that game out there. And that almost seems like, for us, that's the finish line. But in reality, it's going to be the starting line. <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> oh. oh. Just the beginning. Uh, Battle director... I'm going to I don't want to butcher this. Battle director Ryota Suzuki says Final Fantasy 6 Final Fantasy 16 is his magnum opus. Suzuki says that the next mainline entry in the long-running Final Fantasy series is his magnum opus, declaring in a live letter, "I truly think this game is my own personal masterpiece." I freaking love like the passion and the I feel like what a lot of Japanese game developers bring to the table is this like love for video games and storytelling that is just like almost like a lost art to be so invested in like loving what you're doing that you would call it your magnum opus and you've like given everything to make this the best like this isn't a job for him you know what I mean and it's so obvious in that quote like this isn't just his nine to five this is like something he's passionate about and i just think i don't even play final fantasy but i'm like this is dope this is him saying this is the the very best i have ever done in my life this will be my swan song if i go tomorrow like look at this like fighting uh this battle like director look, look at this fighting mechanics and everything that i built out i love it yeah final fantasy 16 they released a demo for it and it was overwhelmingly positive um, I've never played a Final Fantasy either, but this is probably going to be the first at one all? I'll play. Nope. I played I played Lost Odyssey. That's the closest to a Final Fantasy I've ever played. I remember, I remember when you were playing through that, like when I was like kind of new. I loved Lost Odyssey. I played that all the way through. Didn't you play Blue Dragon also like, around that same time? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Not, not a, I didn't finish it or anything like that, but... I've never finished a Final Fantasy game. I always end up getting bored eventually. <laughs> I was really, really into Final Fantasy VII back when it was, like, new. I didn't own a PlayStation, but I would borrow my friend's PlayStation and their copy of it, and I would I played almost all the way to the end, but not all, but it never ended up finishing it. And then yeah. I remember in 11th grade, I I got another copy from Sean's girlfriend now wife um i traded my soul for her to it for her uh we wrote it was like in the simpsons when bart sold his soul i we wrote down henry's henry's uh soul feelings and emotions on three pieces of paper and i traded that to her for a copy oh. of sonic spinball and also um final fantasy 7 um <laughs> And, was it worth uh, it man. in retrospect? Sonic Spinball still holds up. Uh, I got really <laughs> bored playing through uh, Final Fantasy again. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, that's the thing is uh, <laughs> Final Fantasy was kind of always on on the other the other consoles. So, like, we had a Nintendo 64, and then we had an Xbox, you know, and so it was always that series that was, like, over there. We never, I never really played it. Phil Spencer responds to why Halo wasn't at the Xbox Games Showcase. Quote, I wouldn't say Halo is of lesser importance, but we have over 20 studios now. 
I'll go back to the years where we had basically four games. Fable, Forza, Halo, Gears, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We have a lot more games now. I think... He's not wrong. He's not wrong, but I think they are really, really... Since it's all gone so far downhill, I really think they are... There is coming a day where Halo is just not going to be the game of Xbox. Phil Spencer, same guy, was quoted saying, hey, if Halo fails, Xbox fails. I don't think that's going to hold up. I think Halo can fail, and Xbox I... will still be around, and they have so many studios making so many games. I don't think he's it's, wrong, it's a, it's but I do bag. think he is. I, I do think they are like moving away from Halo. They are moving away from Halo, but it's... It's they're moving away from Halo, but not. I don't think it's completely as you were saying. It's like what is what have people said about the Xbox brand for the since the Xbox One? There's no, they don't have games. There's not enough variety of games, and the Xbox branding being the four horsemen of Fable, Forza, Halo, and Gears, and that being the core of their brand has held them back in a lot of people's eyes and. It's the, and they know they want to differentiate themselves from that. So like, are they still doing Forza? Yeah. Are they still doing ha- Fable? Yeah. Again, um, it's been a been million years since the last one, but you know whatever. But they know that they need to show off more than that, right? It doesn't help that Halo had a bit of a lackluster year last year, um, to say the least. So, um, the very least it's, it's a mixed bag, right? I, I don't think it's entirely, you know, I don't think it's entirely all just because Halo didn't do that well. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, Microsoft did have that string string of years where it was just those four games over and over. Like you just knew what was going to happen. You knew it was going to come out there was some kind of Halo game. Forza Gears, um, and like to the point where you know I, the Forzas I haven't been able to keep up with all the Forzas, and then like the Gears I don't think I even played Gears Five or the uh, the Tactics one. Um, the last one I really played was Three, um, so I don't know. I just. Halo just, you know, holds such a special place in my heart and just to see see it in the state that it is and it's, you know, I just think back of like Halo 2 and 3's launch and is like is there ever going to be you know, that kind of like cultural moment again with like a Halo game and I think the way they're handling the the series right now, like it's never going to happen. So you know, we almost had it with Infinite. That's what makes Infinite so disheartening, is because it was close. It, yeah. it felt like Halo was back, and everyone was hype and playing it, but it just couldn't hold people's attention because the campaign was you know incredibly well regarded. Everybody was playing the damn game, and we stopped. Stopped. Halo Infinite Season 4 releases today, and Halo fans have been roasting Halo Infinite's hilarious Season 4 (laughs) armor. Fans have not been holding back when it comes to making fun of the new hazmat helmet designs, comparing them to Monster Zeke and Bumblebee from Transformers. Now, I will say, look, it's not very Halo in my mind, but I get it. They're going on theme, and it's infection, and all. Some of them look cool, and they're hazmaty, and whatever, whatever, whatever. But come on, the same yellow, and the same thing. And I really, I really can't do the goggles. I mean, is that not your transformer guy, Henry? Is that not Bumblebee? Like that is Bumblebee, is it not? I feel like it's got to be deliberate, dude. Like it's got to be deliberate. Like it's, it looks like Bumblebee, like. Yeah, it. Um, I like that. I like the other one that that you showed off. Um, the one that looks like Monsters Inc. I like it. That it looks like a gas mask. I've I've worn gas masks before. It that's if you want your 
Spartan helmet to look like a gas mask, well, yeah, that's how it's gonna look. Like, it's, it looks sci-fi hazmat, and that's what they were going for. The Bumblebee one, a little bit too on the nose. They're going for, like, the respirator gas mask look, but at the same time, it's like, we know they have respirators. We see Spartans in space. We don't need to have that additional filter there. Like, trying too hard with that one, but... I like the other one a lot. Yeah, there's a couple that are uh, also atrocious. Um, that uh, there's one that's literally it's just the it's vi- you know visor from here 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 all the way back the whole thing, and it's but it's like rectangled off at the top, it goes back. It is atrocious. We'll throw the picture up, but look, we all remember the fishbowl. This yeah, Bungie, I was, I was, I was Bungie, that the whole Bungie time. <laughs> had some pretty, pretty unforgivable uh. sins as well. So I, you know, I don't mind that. It I struggle with the Fortniteification of Halo. You know, I don't like the Fortniteification of like, oh yeah, now we have Bumblebee in here and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't uh, want that. Bungie was like know. really towing the line to begin with, and now they're just kind of like going for it at this point. You know, I do like. I've been playing infinite again and we i think we're finally actually at a point where they were saying when the game was brand new do you remember them talking about how many combinations there are so you will never see another spartan that looks identical but like when the game was new there was so few options that everyone just looked the f***ing same and even when something new came out Everyone was so thirsty for something new that he had a team of cat boys just running around like I was one of them. Like everyone had the same same skull helmet. Everyone had the same flaming shoulders. Everyone had a cat boy helmet. Like it just uh, it when something new and shiny was there, we grabbed it because it's what we could get. And now there has been enough time. There's been enough releases that, and then of course the. Um, these slight options that they have opened up for cross core for like visors and stuff. We, we now have, um, a good variety of Spartans out there. I don't see anyone that looks identical to me and I don't ever have a team where everyone just looks the damn same. So, you know, we finally reached that point. I don't know when that happened exactly. Cause I stopped playing for like almost a year, but you know, we're there now. Nice. How's, uh, have you played infection yet? No, because that, that dropped today, right? I've been playing playing other stuff. Yeah. So. Nice. Valorant finally gets a team deathmatch mode. Set to go live 27th of June. The new mode lets you and your teammates go up against an enemy team in one of three new maps. In usual team deathmatch rules, the first team to rack up 100 kills with the leading team taking the victory if the clock runs out beforehand. Tide scores will end in a draw. What do you think of... Uh, Think of team deathmatch in like CS type games. I think that could be pretty fun. It can be like um, I don't know how serious anyone can take uh, take it at that yeah. point. You know, like Not no one plays no one plays CS deathmatch and actually takes it serious. At least I never have in my entire time playing CS over the last twenty years. So. But yeah. it's just it's weird for it to finally come out on uh, like like that. That's right. such a it's weird out, idea. The games came come out been out for how long now? Yeah, like Team Deathmatch. Yeah, well, Apex Apex just added it recently too, so it might be following suit. Yeah, maybe they're running out of ideas. Like we'll throw in a Team Deathmatch for you for a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> that's like the first idea someone ever comes up with when there's an FPS. But like, what if we <laughs> shoot each other? And the goals to shoot each other more times than the other guy, huh? Fresh. Fresh idea. Uh, Diablo 4 is getting a massive patch improving nightmare dungeons, gem inventory space, quality of life adjustments for druids, LOL, disconnect issues, nightmare dungeon XP boost, material caps increase, and character buffs. At least 13, Blizzard said at least 13 pages worth of patch notes hoping to drop mid-July. I know you're very happy about all of this, John. <laughs> yeah, 
no the the biggest gripe i've had with diablo 4 is the gems that's like been the most annoying frustrating thing it's to the point where you know you're you're running around and you just have like 11 12 slots of your inventory just taken up by every single kind of gem so they said that they're going to treat it like a like a material so that like a crafting material so then you won't even have to think about it or worry about it which uh which is cool which is cool which is nice what i hope that they do is bring back the legendary gems from diablo 3 Mm. because now if you just put them in your you know as a crafting material you're not even going to be thinking about them so like they're not even like interesting anymore they're just like a material but diablo 3 had legendary gems that you could socket into your armor and weapons and they had really cool effects and things so crossing my fingers hopefully those come back because that would be that would be pretty awesome that'd be amazing all all up it's been very fun playing a game that I was nervous about spending $70 on a game that I'd never even played before. I've never played one, two, or three. And, man, I'm, like, really glad that I did. It's just refreshing to play a game that, one, has just a great launch, really positive. It it works, but it more than works. It's just great fun, great progression. Um, But on top of it, like, mid-July is going to just be money, for an update and they're saying that they're going to bring a lot more content they're saying with updates to expect content not just patches and things and so that's 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 like the perfect time july will be perfect to drop something because people like myself like an average player i would consider myself very average maybe slightly above because i have you and lee carrying me a little bit but most average players, I think, will be just primed for a July drop of some some content, even if it's a little bit, and all that stuff. So they're they're crushing, and that's it's fun to be involved in a game that's actually crushing like that. I've been uh, I've been really really enjoying it. So um, once the gem thing's fixed, that's about it. I actually, for the first time ever, I don't even remember the last time I did this playing a video game, but I made an Excel sheet to like <laughs> help me keep track of things for my character <laughs> oh my because there's just so many details and so many things that you can level up and change and adjust and you know you're looking for all of these different things in the world to like add to your character and so i just like i have to map this out and make a list and check off what i have because the inventory and menus are kind of terrible too so hopefully they fix some of that so trying to look through your inventory and see what legendaries you have what aspects you have is just like especially on console is just like a nightmare (laughs) you know who has not been enjoying diablo is streamer quinn 69 dies in hardcore mode losing his 172 hour druid during a loading screen he'd accumulated 71 million gold across 172 hours and 50 minutes of playtime with the character when an apparent glitch killed him he said quote fix your game in a tweet on june 14th <laughs> let's check out the clip i was at overreacting it's like almost getting one shot okay get the f- out of here bro Nah. Okay, my game's crashed or something. This is pretty sweet. <laughs> bro, bro, like Jeez, literally, bro. Is... I finished oh, the fucking map. Fucking game, Daddy! Fix your fucking game! Fix your fucking game! Fix your fucking game! Fix it! Fuck it! Fuck I feel <laughs> that's what playing hardcore does to you. He's going to start another character like immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that's what hardcore I players know. do. <laughs> uh, they, that's what you sign up for. You're throwing away your life playing hardcore. <laughs> he has a punching bag set up with a camera on it. The guy, he's ready for that. Yeah, let's not be a bad idea. Let's be real. He's ready. <laughs> it's part of the gig, but that makes me sick to my stomach, and I will not oh, be playing man. hardcore, especially 
if I could lose my character in a loading screen. No chance. Zero zero percent chance. Can you imagine it happening with other games like DMZ? You know how hard I would have raged if when we were playing DMZ so much. Mm. Oh man. Like just all all your yeah, crap that's... gone. Mm. That's a legendary clip right there. <laughs> It's like, hold on, my game crashed real quick. And then it's just like, this hero has ascended to the heavens. Like, no! Nah! So, oh the re- yeah, so that was like a glitch. But also, if you just exit the game, you, your character dies too. Like, if you alt F4 and get out, your character will just die. Like, you can't disconnect either. Well, I mean, that makes sense because if you get in a tight spot, you could just be like, boom, boom you know, instead of dying. Like, so I get it, but also there's gotta be some way to like fit. Like Blizzard should be able to see that video and be like, Oh, yo, it was a, like a glitch or whatever. I don't know if that's a bad precedent to set, but like, yo, we'll reset your character. Here's your character. I mean, back or you whatever. can, you can, if this, his game crashed there, there would be a way when you're writing this program that you would be able to say, okay, if it crashed, we can rec- we're can we not going to let the value of the character dying happen, but a force close, either through task manager or like Alt F4, yeah, if, if it's, that's, that's different. You're, you're, the, the software will be able to recognize. Mm-hmm. The difference between it's one hundred percent doable. It's just someone they should either didn't they, someone didn't care to, or I don't know how it, how that decision's made. But hmm. Halo Infinite officially releases Infection with season four. This twenty year old fan favorite game type finally makes its return to Halo Infinite. About time. It's been a year <laughs> and a half. Yeah. Good for them, I guess, huh? They did it. We did it, Joe. We did it. <laughs> it didn't I'll be honest. Yeah. I don't think I've not once had fun playing infection. <laughs> it is just not my game type. Not, you didn't, how I like not even Halo like uh playing the duck hunt mode? Not even like duck hunt or, infection? Or like Halo two where you switch teams manually? No. The only time I ever played it was at some land parties, and I was just like, uh, oh, "This sucks." <laughs> it is yeah, a very I just... casual game. Yeah, <laughs> I never get to be a survivor. I'm always a zombie every time. I mean, it is. I really like to see the creativity of the community from Infection. Like when we started seeing people really utilizing Forge. Forge, Infection is what catapulted Forge into what it became. I want to say. Well, just like everything in me when I play Halo is like trying not to die. And in Infection, you're just dying like constantly. And so every time I'm dying, I just like get annoyed. And (laughs) what about (laughs) all the creative like infection modes like Jenga? Did you like playing Jenga? I never played any of those. Those are. Though, what about you, Dave? Did you did you like my those favorite ones? infection mode? I did. I wasn't a Forge Lord like you and Ray Ray, but my favorite <laughs> infection game mode was uh, what was the blank canvas that had rounded corners in Halo Three? The blank Foundry. Forge level Foundry. Uh, they when they built a mansion in Foundry, and it was just like storm the house, right? And so all the Spartans would be in the top level of the house. And then as a zombie, you had to, like, fight your way through this, like, I don't know, it was maybe, like, six levels. It was a, it filled the whole thing and fight through, and it was real intricate, and it was fun fighting in that. That was my favorite, like, I don't know, Haunted Mansion or whatever they called it. That was my favorite zombie mode. It was just infection, but the level was, like, really creative. So I like that one. But I played all the other stuff. It's fun. It's just not really my my go-to, like, you yeah. know. I 100% agree. Like, it's... I've never been like, hey, guys. Infection. (laughs) But, like... (laughs) I do remember when Halo 3 added the Infection playlist. And I played it. Like, the day it came out, I was like, oh, cool. I'll play Infection with strangers now. And it's... It's... 
something I enjoy, but I've never been a big infection person. But the fact that it was not there felt wrong. Mm. Yeah. You know? It should have it should have been there. A hundred percent. And with the Borg fact that it took a year and a half feels embarrassing. Yeah. Yep. Microsoft says it's officially done making new Xbox One games and has now moved on to Gen 9. Two and a half years later after the launch of its Xbox Series XS consoles, Microsoft has officially said goodbye to the previous generation, revealing that all 23 of Microsoft's internal Xbox studios, aside from those specifically working on support for ongoing games like Minecraft Sea of Thieves, Dad's Lucky, uh, have now moved on to Gen 9. I thought they moved on from Generation 8. I thought they moved on, like, before it even launched. They haven't been doing any games. Well, everything was kind of um, released in a like, simultaneous manner, like Halo Infinite, where it was they were releasing on both, and part of that is because of, you know, COVID. We, people couldn't get consoles. Uh, so they're like, we're going to continue supporting and releasing watered down versions that are still incredibly representative of the game. Um, because you can, with the same art, sharing the same architecture becomes a lot easier than it used to be to do this sort of thing. So. Yeah. And for that reason, it still doesn't really feel like I've played like a gen nine game. Right. They've all just kind of felt a little bit better, like the Series S and X enhanced games. You know, the frame rates are higher, resolution, stuff like that. But there hasn't been anything that's like, okay, this is like a it doesn't Gen feel 9 like game, 100% yeah. all the way. It's not released on the one. Yeah. I remember, like, first time playing Gears of War and being like, whoa, dude, you know. And granted, it's it was a different, you know, it's a different leaps. The leaps are different. Um, but it would be nice to just see uh, a, a little uptick, you know, a little uptick, paying a premium for the console. It'd be nice to just see a little, a little something, something. It, we're just reach, we're reaching a point with that technology that we're reaching diminishing returns. That's all it is. And like, we've started been on, the, we've been on this path for a while, which is how Nintendo ended up going. Well, let's just be weird <laughs> and doing <laughs> doing Nintendo things instead of trying to keep up with like the arms race aspect of like consoles they are just gonna be weird because they saw that it was diminishing returns like a long time ago we were and yeah that's exactly what happened like i will i would argue that like the xbox 360 was the last time we saw a giant leap between generations like going from original xbox to xbox 360 was is it's absolutely incredible you can't not feasibly like think about something like dead rising running on the original xbox right but like going up from xbox 360 to the next generation it it felt incremental like there was an update upgrade here but not significant enough um it's significant enough to notice but not like blatant right but going from this cur- last gen to the current gen, it doesn't feel like anything. It doesn't. You can't see it in a screenshot. It has to be in motion for you to like be able to like. Yes, that is the new version. Right. Yep. New Twitch update introduces Partner Plus tier and seems to miss the mark. Yet again, with streamers, Twitch is offering 70-30 revenue split to streamers, but there's a catch. A streamer must have and hold at least 350 paid subscriptions over a three-month period. Twitch primes are not included. The 70-30 split will only count for the first 100K made. Um, After that, it goes back to 50-50 split permanently. Uh, a lot of people are upset about this, and I just don't know why you would. I I know why Twitch is doing this because they are floundering and they're just completely out of touch with what streamers want. But as a streamer myself, I don't know why I would ever want this. Um, so basically, 
I'm getting punished if I do really, really well. If I hit 100K uh, in a year, which would be, that's incredible for, you know, streaming and everything. Um, there's no incentive to go past that because, well, Twitch is going to take a much bigger cut. And when you have kick right over the, if I can get 350 paid subs on Twitch and they're going to take half of it, why wouldn't I go to kick where I can get 350 subs and get a 95, five split? It's just insane. So they Twitch knows this. So I don't know what they're trying to do. It seems it again, it just seems like they're floundering and I, I, I don't know, dude. I really don't know. Yeah, they've been on <clears throat> they've been on quite a roll of just um upsetting upsetting their creators. Um so I mean their people are leaving left and right like huge streamers. Um and it just makes it so upsetting that like YouTube isn't doing more to like get their act together with streaming and <laughs> And take advantage of this because uh yeah it's like very clear that twitch you know owned by amazon uh, does not does not really care about their creators like you think of like their their top streamers like that follow all the rules and do everything just the way they want to do it and it's like they're just taking taking money from them. they're like oh we're gonna just change the terms you know now you just now it's 50 50 nothing you can do about it and i mean that's even i mean you still gotta pay taxes too so you're getting 70 30 and then paying taxes and you're like okay what's left from my <laughs> from my twitch subscription a dollar <laughs> a dollar dollar per sub so yeah it sucks it sucks, and the the that primes don't count either is 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 messed up too. Giant corporations are not beyond being shut down, and we saw Mixer, backed by Microsoft, absolutely just get the plug pulled. And if you know, it's only a matter of time before Twitch, you know, because we know they're not making money. That's been public, so it's only a matter of time before Amazon says, okay. We gave it a good shot and we're done. It's fine. Like there's no people think Twitch is forever, but the reality is, is look, they giant, giant, giant corporations can be totally just, you know, there's tons of people working at Mixer, but it wasn't, didn't work. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next year or so. I think they got to make some big sweeping changes. There's some new fresh blood in the mix now. And they're like kick is going on a tear. Like they are, they are like the the scrappy teenager who's gunning for the top spot. And they're like they're getting after it. And they're signing a bunch of. They've already signed a bunch of big big Twitch streamers. And it could, um, yeah, it'll it could be interesting. But Hunter, Call of the Wild, Australia DLC uh, dropped today. Right today. Yeah today. Um, Hunter Call of the Wilds, nice. Emerald Coast Australia DLC is available now, bringing a new map, 14 new and returning animal species, and the new bolt-action rifle, uh, Z uh, Zagan Verminter 22-250. Additionally, the free Outback update is also available now, featuring the Great One Fallow Deer, a new Australian-themed outfit, and, a, and numerous game improvements. I watched this trailer and I was like, yes, let's go. Let's play. One cool <laughs> thing that I noticed is one of the sections, it's based off of uh, the Blue Mountains, which are near Sydney where I lived. And there was uh, a shot of the famous three sisters in the Blue Mountains, which is oh, uh, cool. uh, like it's just three little uh I don't even know, like three kind of like peaks right next to each other. It's a famous uh, spot in the Blue Mountains. And I thought that was a brilliant little nod. I'm like, oh, they they did their research. I didn't think they wouldn't do their research, but I was like, they did their research. It looks like the Blue Mountains. I went hiking around there. And so I'm actually very excited to get into it and see what it's all about because, you know, it's Hunter. It's 
The Hunter has done a great job of supporting a game for eight years now, almost. And 2017, right? That's when it, the game originally came out. And every six months, it's like, here's a new map. And, like, the fact that we've, like, it's had that much support that has not dropped at all. The game has some jank, sure. But, like... In a small team. Like a legitimately a small team, like uh, it's 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 fun. It's impressive. They look they're very engaged with their community, and it's uh, it's it definitely feels like an outlier in the world of modern gaming. Um, I like that the uh, Australian themed outfit they did say was deliberately based off of Steve Irwin. Um, in oh, their, like, is the, it? Developer... Yeah, the developer is diary. It? Oh, yeah, that's so they, awesome! <laughs> it's um, but instead of shorts, they drew pants and they gave him long sleeves instead. They're like, yeah, man, you don't want spiders getting up your, you know, legs. So you got <laughs> long short, you got some pants instead of shorts, and we're giving them long sleeves. To me, I'm pretty sure it's because it's easier for their animators to <laughs> yeah. draw to, to, to it'd make be so that, janky one person running around in shorts <laughs> like it's uh it's probably just easier for their their artists to do pants and long sleeves but i'll take it fine whatever like it it looks it looks fun um it looks good i haven't looked into what all the animals there are on this uh this new map besides the fact that being this got announced me and you dave were talking about like there needs to be kangaroos if I can't take out a pig or kangaroo. There <laughs> are. Confirmed. Yes, I was watching are, the trailer, and, yeah. it, and it's like oh, loads of new species, or it's an Australian accent, but loads of new species, to the, and it pans across a kangaroo like on its side, and I just was thinking, Pow! I was just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm going to get this yeah, kangaroo. Yeah, I'm not going to show a kangaroo unless you can shoot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Raymond was questioning why my, C- my, why my iPhone is set to... Um, to australian we were like driving the car and like she's speaking <laughs> in my gps he's like why is your phone australian it's more pleasant like, yeah. sounds better than normal yeah. siri yeah it is it's way more pleasant <laughs> than normal siri i love australian accents fortnite legend and streamer tifu this broke today is retiring from streaming and gaming. After 15 years of streaming and content creating, streamer Tifu is calling it quits, saying he feels trapped streaming six to eight hours a day and needs to live his life. I actually genuinely love this for him. Uh, he's 25. He's only 25 years old. He's been in the scene nonstop for 15 years, and he literally like is sitting on his computer all day every day. For 15 years basically and that is like that's that's so brutal i know people give streamers a hard time when they complain especially rich ones right but it's like dude that is so brutal i don't even like i don't even like streaming more than a couple times a week because it's just so taxing and you feel and you do like need to like entertain and keep in, people engaged and stuff it's so taxing, and so I think this is going to be great for him. He'll be back. I He said, I don't know if I'll come back. He's going to come back. He's a gamer. You don't just, like, totally walk away. But hopefully when he comes back, I hope to see, you know, I hope to see him have a not as full-on schedule. Burnout's real. No matter what you're doing, burn, you know, burnout is 100% real. And, um, yeah, even trying to play video games and entertaining at the same time, you're not just casually playing. You're, like, having to engage and be entertaining. It, It's work. It doesn't matter what the heck you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're having fun at the same time. You can have fun while doing work, but it still is going to be work, dude. You'll like work. So, Well, Sunday morning, a five-person crew on a submarine named Titan submerged on a dive to the Titanic wreckage site. The crew aboard the research ship lost contact with the sub about an hour and 45 minutes later. The submarine was piloted using a $30 Logitech PC gamepad. Um, this is still pretty fresh, and we really hope that uh, these people are found. There's a lot of oxygen you know, I think I read there's enough oxygen to last 96 hours, is 96 what I hours or something. So I hope I hope this is OK. But what on earth 
a thirty dollar Logitech gamepad. I mean, you have all that money, and you 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 build it out using a. It, I don't know. It just seems a little dodgy to me. Um. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's not a Mad Cats. <laughs> yeah. That, if it was Mad Cats, I would not hesitate to laugh. Um, oh my god! Even though by the end of their by before Mad Cats went under, they had turned their you know their quality quite around. Yeah, their fight sticks. Their fight sticks. Their arcade. <laughs> their uh, Rock Band three controllers. They started making really good stuff in their last like you know six years of existing. And then they went under because they got bought by a Chinese company. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. I I don't think I would trust a thirty dollar controller um but at the same time you, you should i it's just uh i want to know how they get to that point where they make that decision because to to use that right but like i've seen in other insane stuff using off the shelf stuff right i've seen a you know, two hundred thousand uh, dollar mech using um, um, a Hotas that was like for a PC. It's not unusual in like rapid engineering, but like um, it does become weird when you look at how much the each of those people paid to be a part of this trip. Yes. A quarter million yes. dollars. And we don't know that the we don't know right that the controller caused right. That's no, saying, no, like, no. Like, I don't think the controller caused it, but it just seems that with the amount of money invested in this project, that that's the thing you would use. And why not wired? Like wireless, you know? I, I thought it was a wired one. That's why it's thirty dollars. Well, let's because because USB. Let's check this out. Let's let's roll the clip. Oh. Take your shoes off, that's customary. Okay. Wow. Inside, the sub has about as much room as a minivan. So this is not your grandfather's submersible. <laughs> we only have one button, that's it. It should be like an elevator. You know, it shouldn't take a lot of skill. We can use these off the shelf components. I got these from uh, Camper World. We run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! It seems like this submersible has some elements of MacGyver-y jerry rigness. That's that makes it much more questionable making using a wireless signal um, because that's another point of failure. Because now your Bluetooth module could fail. Um, you can have difficulty. You can lose control of Bluetooth because it's just it's like I look. Yeah, I'm I'm technically a scientist, um, but like I I can't honestly speak to how. Bluetooth, you know, you know, short range spectrum stuff works two and a half miles underneath. Yeah, yeah. It says while rescuers fear for crew, Logitech F seven ten PC gamepad sells out within minutes. That's so crazy, dude. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> Compatible engineering is valid engineering. All right, compatibility engineering is valid engineering. It's fine to do that sort of thing. Use off the shelf components when you can. But um, I don't know. It's a that's a bit ballsy to do it in and then charge money. You know what I mean? Like if it was if it was your own personal project, by all means, man, go to Camper World and get some fucking shit and and make your little sub submersible. Don't charge a quarter million dollars and like take people down there with you, right? That's my take on it. Like, um, I don't know. I really hope it all works out. I hope they find them. That would be a great story. I hope this doesn't end in a terrible tragedy. Um, but crazy and interesting. Um, but hopefully the Logitech pulls through. And uh, yeah, anything else for the good? Of, anything else for the good of the pod? At least it's not a Mad Cats, right? At least it's not Mad Cats. 
I mean, there's there's words. I just want to play Diablo. Yeah, I'm going to go back to playing GTA. <laughs> well, all the extra stuff is going to be on the uh, unedited version for members on the YouTube channel. So, so we went a little over an hour. But that's okay. It's good. It's great. I love the I love the pace this time. I love the pace this time. I felt like we we hit every topic about about even. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But all right. Well, that's the that's the pod. Till next week. Till next week. GGs. GGs.